Welcome back, everyone. I want to be very clear here. This is not me predicting that this sequence will happen, but today's video is going to be talking about the semi, well, the kind of logical progression of how if we get to a state where, well, let's just say investors are having a lot of fun, how we would get there. Historically, uranium has had some exciting or fun or I don't know what you want to call it cycles uranium rushes I guess that's what we'll call it now I'm not saying that this definitely will happen again because I cannot guarantee that I don't know how psychology is going to work and you know there's an argument that there's enough uranium around okay so this next part is if and this is a big if if it happens again, this will be why. Step one, demand returns to the market. Now, if you know the uranium space, um, and I mentioned this before in a video about uh, emotional demand or variable demand, you'll know that over the past few years, the uh, utilities have been destocking their inventory, running down inventory instead of buying as much as they consume. So step one, and I think most people can agree to this point, eventually the utilities will probably return to the market and start buying as much as they use, which means that we get to step two, the price. The price, again, most people can agree on this one, the price must rise to get to a point that will incentivize miners to mine. And not only break even, we're talking about want to go out there and take the risk of producing. So demand returns, step one. Step two, price moves up. Step three, demand. Wait, demand, price, demand. Um, why is it demand again? Well, think about it this way, and I mentioned this a few times in past videos. If there's enough uranium, if X mine, Y mine, and Z mine appear, what if just X? Or what if utilities just look out into the future and they see a lot of uh, blank space in the supply demand chart and they just want to secure their supply? So what Step three would be is the utilities contracting for more uranium than they need. If they do this on a enough of a scale and want to actually restock their inventory in this time of uncertainty, we then get to step four, which again is price. Because the fact is, if in year 20 QQ, well, let's call it 2025, for example, if in that year you wanted X uranium, like, I don't know, let's call it a million pounds. No, sorry, we can't call it a million pounds. So let's call it 100, well, let's call it 200 million pounds. If you want 200 million pounds, you need a price of whatever. If you need 210, 220 million pounds, you might need a price higher than the whatever it was before. So this kind of catches everyone off guard and kind of, well, not kind of, but really increases the demand above what the market was prepared for. Next, what happens or what could happen is this additional unexpected demand and resulting price going higher than people were expecting. And I don't know, maybe some questions with builds because things are rushed or or whatnot or people just start looking out in the future and counting and questioning this dynamic could lead to the security of supply discussion now if you look throughout the past seemingly no matter when in the market you see that some people aren't super concerned with economics and they look and they just want their uranium and they're more concerned with guaranteeing they get it than what they might what premium they might have to pay for it so here the step five would be 
people going out there and buying projects at valuations and prices that confuse the market and the market doesn't really understand what they paid. And look in the past, look at Chinese companies buying Husa, buying Rossing at prices that completely make sense if you look at the dynamics of the environment. Will that happen again? I don't know. It could. Then, lastly, we get to what I'll call the why not me phase. And this is the point where basically some people see that prices are being, well, amounts of money that don't make sense or are just really would be nice to have. And I'll imagine those types of money uh, would be nice to have. But anyway, uh, uh, too much money in the eyes of the balanced market starts being spent on projects and then everyone kind of looks at their project or looks at the other projects and are like, well, if that's worth that, mine's worth whatever. So if, and I put here, if a bunch of dust in the African desert, we're talking like low grade, whatever, is worth a hundred, well then, you know, this moose pasture in Canada could be worth like whatever we want to say. And the point is, the why not me is the the speculative phase, the, the, well, if that's worth that, what's worth whatever. And that's the end of the, in, well, that's, that's the, that is the insanity, I guess. It's not the end of the insanity, but this is how we would get here. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you've made it to this point, I applaud you. Um, if you enjoyed, you might also enjoy the other episodes in this series, and they will be all out eventually, and probably some have been released already. As always, nothing I say is investment advice. This is all just what I'm seeing, how I'm thinking about the sector, and what I view as relevant. So with that, I will leave you there, and have a great day.